Kirk. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> David, yes. cancel the meal. They're all too tired. <laughs> we'll try that again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Evening. Fantastic. You having a good time? Yes. Well, welcome. Welcome to Glasgow and the SECC. And of course, no visit to Scotland and to Scotland's famous cities is complete without trying some of Scotland's very traditional fare. And you can see, oh, by the way, this is David, your chef for this evening. A round of applause. So you can see that David has prepared a haggis for you. He's prepared it in the traditional manner. He's cut off the head, the wings. The... What are you laughing at? <laughs> and, uh, of course, it's uh, traditional also uh, to say a few words about the haggis before we eat the haggis to say a few words about those that uh, eat the haggis and more importantly about those who don't eat the haggis. And we'll just have a wee show of hands here. How many people here tonight have tasted haggis before? Oh, look at that. That is very promising. That's good. Second question. How many people have not tasted haggis before? Okay. Well, you're in for a treat. Okay. And the third question. This is the big one. How many people have no intentions of trying haggis? <laughs> well, we use the words of our immortal uh, bard, Robert Burns, one of Scotland's most famous sons, to address the haggis. And it goes a bit like this. Fair for your honest, sonsy face. Great chieftain, o' oh, the puddin' race. Aboon them all ye tack your place, pange triper theorem. Wheeler ye were their grace, as langs my earum. That groaning trencher, there you fill, your hurdies like some distant hill, your prison help to mend a mill. Sorry, that's my microphone. <laughs> I've never been mic'd up before. <laughs> Thank you. Your pin will help to mend a mill in time and eat while through your pores the juice is still like amber bead. His knife, see. Rustic labour dicht, and cut you up the rainy's licht. Oh, dredging your gushing entrails bricht like only ditch then. What a glorious sicht! Warm. Oh, reeking. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> then horn for horn they stretch and strive. Dilt it and must only drive till all their wheel swelt kites blive a brent like drums. Then old good man may like to arrive. <coughs> Be thank it hums. Is there that our his French ragout or oleo would stow a sou? I'm coming down. <laughs> or oleo would stow a sou or frick a sea would mack a spew with perfect scunner. Look down with sneer and scorn for view on sick a dinner. Pierre devil. <laughs> See him out of his trash. A bit worried now. As feckless as a withered rash. His spindle shank, a git whip lash, his knee. <laughs> <laughs> a nut through bloody flood or field to dash. How unfit. But mark the rustic haggis fade. The trembling earth resounds his trade. Clapping his while he neave a blade. And he'll mack it whistle, and legs, and arms. Is he a friend? <laughs> or he's ill stayed, like taps the thistle. Watch your fingers. The important part. Ye powers, will make mankind your care, and dish them out their bill of fare. Old Scotland wants nae skinkin' wear that joups in luggies. No. Very quickly back to the stage. If you wish her great for praise, give her a haggis. Thank you. <laughs> Here, here's another wee Scottish tradition. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please charge your glasses and join with me in toasting the haggis. Now, just before I go, just in case you're a little concerned about the size of this haggis and the number of you that are there, <laughs> don't be alarmed, because David and his team, they have prepared for you a whole flock of Haggai. <laughs> They're laughing again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Please have a fabulous evening. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll just pipe it back out. Yeah.